This video is brought to you by Law Excellence IAS Academy. Dear students, welcome to Deep Daily Editorial Enrichment Program of Law Excellence R&D. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 10th July 2019. The first article for discussion that is more appeasement than justice. Here we need to understand appeasement versus justice. So, Marathas were provided reservation by Maharashtra government and what has been stated as a reason is their backwardness. But the article says that the criteria to identify backwardness itself is faulty and a separate class is created in the name of socially and educationally backward classes to provide reservations only to Marathas. So in this context, this is more a class legislation. Previously for Gujars, Rajasthan did the same and Supreme Court has declared that it is unconstitutional. In India, we cannot distinguish based on classes. It means the class legislation is unconstitutional. We can classify them. It means Marathas can be put under OBCs or backward classes or scheduled castes, but they cannot be classified as a separate class to provide them for the reservations. So that's why a constitutional scrutiny will make them to get invalid. And second, the backwardness criteria, various state backward commissions, it has, they have objected to inclusion of Marathas among OBCs, especially Katri and Bapat commissions were important over here. But later, a, uh, a non-legal or else which do not have a statutory status, a commission was constituted under Narayan Rane, later Gaikwad headed that commission. It has recommended for inclusion of Marathas in the backward classes category. It means the criteria which the Gaikwad commission followed are the Jandis treatment. It means there is a lot of superstition among the Marathas as these people go for the treatment to quacks. And the second, the agrarian distress and former suicides. Remember, Marathas are a land owning class. They did not face the discrimination, historical discrimination. They are politically strong. So in these circumstances, the regular criteria applied to provide for reservations do not apply in the case of Marathas. And the next, normally it is a norm that National BC Commission has to be consulted. It is also given the constitutional status now. No effort was made to consult the National BC Commission in this effort. And the backwardness criteria, there is no uniform backwardness criteria. Mandal Commission has given certain criteria. Now, Maharashtra government taken up certain other criteria. In future, if any caste group need to be included in the backward classes, among the backward castes, simply they develop their own criteria which can appear reasonable for them and this is going to create more quota based politics again in India. It means historically the quota based politics stood for appeasement rather than for justice. Though they were claimed to be the basis for social justice in India, the politics revolved around appeasement and BJP is resorting to the same. The next article, the growing power of the lumpen. This article is talking about hate speech and hate crime. So, in India, you know, the hate crime, especially mob lynchings, honor killings are on raise. Honor killings were there even before this government has come to power. But especially religion-based hate crimes, attacks on Dalits have increased. So, how these have to be stopped? What are the solutions that have come up in various Western countries? If you take Germany and France, these have legislated a hate crime legislation. It means that any kind of incitement to violence through hate speeches is subjected, is subjected to arrest. In India, there is no legislation for the hate speech. So, India also has to bring in a stringent law against it. A strong law is not just sufficient if it is not backed by strong enforcement. That's why fast track courts and uh, may, I mean immediate police action also has to support this. The Supreme Court of India has given a judgment and order that um, in every district a senior police officer need to be appointed uh, to prevent these kind of hate crimes. Uh, it is the time a proper legal packing is given for working of this police machinery. And the second, 
the sensitivity to hate speech and crime is decreasing in india what can be the reason when a tv channel is playing it repeatedly showing the same hate crime on the spe- on the tv the people are getting desensitized to it so to uphold the sensitivity of the people to the hate crime the rhetoric on the tv rhetoric on the social media has to be regulated in this scenario regulation of electronic and digital media is essential to reduce the hate crimes and third is a responsible behavior is expected from our legislators ndtv has conducted survey and stated that at least 45 mps have the hate speech have did hate speeches are were responsible for hate crimes in this context the representatives of the people shall hold restraint on this matter if necessary they need to be disqualified and finally leadership has to come from above prime minister home minister has to assure the nation that a stringent action will be given so in this case go rakshaks etc who ideologically align who are the foot soldiers for the present party in power how to be properly regulated through strong leadership as role model that is what this article talks about if hate speeches increase in india obviously india's respect across the world as a tolerable nation gets decreased the next the malice of malnutrition so remember one thing malnutrition is not a crime of present generation it's a crime of the past present and the future it means india is developing and aspiring to be a 5 billion dollar economy but uh, on the back of it we have highest malnutrition in the world it is more than 35% so the long term or chronic malnutrition is more visible in stunting so today the stunting in india it is close to 35 38% and underweight is close to 35% which is highest compared to any other country in the world the situation in india is worse than sub saharan africa and the second region wise the malnutrition is more located in odisha bengal bihar up rajasthan madhya pradesh it means there are specific pockets or districts where malnutrition was remarkably high and the third thing is if we take social classes are among the dalits and tribal population malnutrition is higher than the national average it means that the social discrimination still holds as a ground for malnutrition in india so that's why age old patterns of social and economic exclusions are a reason for this malnutrition so malnutrition has a vicious cycle let's take a pregnant mother who is not well nourished is going to give birth to an underweight child a child who is not fed is not going to have proper brain and other developments so because of this he receives a poor education and literacy and then his ability to earn comes down and will it leads it leads to poverty again and this poverty will perpetuate malnutrition again so it means the poverty of a child starts from the womb of the mother so the poverty of a child is not starting from the child it is starting from the mother so providing for proper nutrition to the mother at the pregnancy is very much important so who are the foot soldiers for pregnant mothers nutrition of the pregnant mothers these are anganwadi workers providing increased salaries to them and ensuring proper nutrition at these centers and constituting them as instruments under portion abhiyan to reduce malnutrition is essential remember andhra pradesh chief minister mr vyas jagan mohan reddy tripled the salaries of anganwadi workers so these are the foot soldiers of preventive health in india and the second the portion abhiyan has a target to reduce the stunting by 2% every year and to bring it below 25% by 2022 so this ambitious ambitious goal has to be tried and achieved in this context what steps has to be taken so malnutrition there is micronutrition and macronutrition especially protein energy malnutrition is very high in india but along with that iron deficiency leading to anemia and then vitamin a deficiency like these are also very high so this nutrient uh, 
I mean deficiency like vitamin A, iron, iodine etc can be arrested through fortification of food. So fortification here stands for bringing this micronutrient with the commonly consumed uh, uh, food. Let's take rice can be fortified with iron something kind of that. And we have to focus on BMARU states, the states where there is high prevalence of chronic malnutrition. And age-old patterns of social and economic exclusion have to be addressed to address this problem. And then, Amartya Sen's statement, please remember this. The world has this poverty and malnutrition not due to the shortage of the food, but due to lack of access to the food. Shortage of food means food production is not low in India, availability of food is not low, but uh, due to distortions in the market, lack of affordability to the people, the access to food is getting reduced. So what we need to address is issues of access to food. The next is losing stream. So this article is budget's inability to focus or force reforms. Immediately after budgets were present, budget was presented, the corporate India did not respond favorably to it. So it has seen that this budget is more than reform oriented, it is retrogressive and increasing the tax burden on them. Everyone are expecting that there will be a stimulus tax reduction or there will be its expenditure to promote the investment by the private sector but nothing of that sort has happened and finance minister stuck to the fiscal deficit target of 3.3 percent the fiscal consolidation became more important rather than boosting the private investment added to that a capital gains tax to the buyback of the shares on foreign investors portfolio investors is one concern and then Minimum public shareholding is what Srita Raman was talking about. It is reduced from 35 percent, I mean, it is increased from 25 percent to 35 percent. It means any public listed company shall release the shares of at least 35 percent for consumption of public at large. And super rich tax was increased. And then uh, there are global headwinds are there, especially the trade wars are. Uh, uh, damaging the global prospects of exports to these companies and the second the global liquidity is getting tightened the reason is um, in the United States of America today employment is high so the government has the luxury our central bank there has the luxury for monetary policy tightening it means we cannot expect the tax that is uh, the rate cuts in monetary policy over there it means the capital is uh, cost is going to increase in the United States of America. Interest rates are going to increase in the United States of America. So in that case, there will be a flight of capital from India to United States of America. So that uh, lead to, again, when we are creating such uh, uh, tax uh, or long-term capital gains tax, etc., these are being increased, uh, it is a more incentive for the people to pull out from Indian market and to invest in the United States of America's market. And the next, douche bank. It is facing a crisis now. And similarly, Indian banking sector whole is facing a crisis. And uh, few benefits were given like labor loss, relaxation, abolition of angel taxes, etc. But still, for the established industry, there are no incentives uh, to expand their businesses. That's what this article says. That is the reason for the collapse of the stock market. And the next, going electrical. So this is about electric vehicles. The budget has given certain incentives that 1.5 lakh rupees interest subvention for the people who bought an electric vehicle. It means if you take the loan from the bank and if you buy electric vehicle, one can get interest subvention up to 1.5 lakhs. And GST council has stated that today GST on motor vehicles is 12%. It will be brought down to 5% on hybrid and electric vehicles. So that reduction in taxes can incentivize the buyers to shift towards electric vehicles but however the concerns still remain india has an ambitious target for electric vehicle mobility so the most important thing among this is uh, the uh, rechargeable stations it means um, the charging infrastructure and affordable charging is important and lithium ion battery infrastructure has to be created and the electronic vehicles are important as they receive the tax benefit i mean uh, electronic vehicles are important in the context of increasing sound and air pollution in the urban areas but without uh, affordable charging charging infrastructure this uh, cannot be successful 
The next is a pre-election strike on Iran. So there is not, nothing much important over here. So it is, uh, the author is predicting that as election is coming close to in 2020 in United States of America, to raise the nationalistic jingo, president can have a limited strike on Iran. It means that a nationalistic jingo to make the America great again. So that can be a ground for limited strike against Iran. That's what the author says. The next, eight letters not in order, says Karnataka. Speaker, you know, there is a crisis in the coalition government in Karnataka as 13 MLAs have resigned from Congress and two MLAs resigned from JDU. So in this case, the letters of resignation need to be accepted by the Speaker. And this leads, uh, this puts the government of Congress and JDU in minority that can pave way for the formation of government by BJP. So in this context, the role of the speaker becomes very much important. As they have resigned to the membership of the party, obviously, as also as MLAs, and a fresh election has to be contested by these 13 MLAs. And then, CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board, pulls up 52 firms over handling of waste. In 2016, plastic waste management rules were brought in by the Pollution Control Board. In this, there is a clause that is called extended producer responsibility. It means whatever the plastic waste that is produced, it has to be collected back by the producer himself or by the third party which is appointed by him. As of now, Amazon, Flipkart, all these big companies also did not take up this EPR seriously. Next is, Supreme Court to decide if illegal migrants can be given the status of refugees. So, Rohingyas, these are the illegal immigrants from Myanmar. What is the difference between an illegal immigrant or a refugee? Refugee normally crosses the border to, I mean, to prevent the, the chances of persecution. It means if the state is persecuting to protect his life, he crosses the border. Then he can be called as a refugee. An immigrant tries to take the advantage of the economic opportunity existing on the other side of the border. So most of the Rohingyas, they came as a refugees. And in this context, it is left to the host country either to call them as illegal immigrants or refugees. In this case, there is a convention, UN Convention on Refugees. India is not a signatory. So if a, if a person is considered as a refugee, the state, host country has a responsibility to protect him and to ensure a stability to his life. If he was considered as illegal immigrant, he can be deported. So now, Rohingyas are refugees or illegal immigrants, the matter is before the court. In this context, the argument made is in, in defense of Article 21. Right to life and liberty applies both to the citizens and non-citizens. As these people, if they are being deported, they will be the victims of persecution. Protection of their life and liberty is necessary as per the constitution. That's how the arguments are happening. The next, Taiwan said to get US weapons. So you know, there is a one China policy. Both Taiwan talks about one China and China also talks about People's Republic of China also talks about one China. So Shanghai Sheikh, he has fled from China after Mao revolution and Taiwan claims itself to be the real China. And then People's Republic of China also claims Taiwan to be the part of it. In this context, Taiwan is democracy, China is communist. So US is giving weapons and arms to the Taiwan, which is a pain to China. The next UN report backs India's stand on pork based militant groups. You know that Office of High Commissioner for Human Rights of UN has given a report which has criticized both India and Pakistan for human rights violations in Kashmir. In this context, India has I mean, decided not to accept this report on the ground like hyphenation of India with Pakistan. So in this case, the human rights activists in India says that there is indictment of the Pakistan and in strengthening of the India's position also in this report. So India shall not deny this report completely. So the report has specifically spoke about the use of child soldiers in Kashmir by the terrorist groups like uh, 
uh, I mean, Lashkar e Taiba, Jaish e Mahmud, etc. So, this use of child soldiers it is being very much criticized in this report. That's what it has been stated. So, the knee jerk denial India has to stop on human rights and shall take the accountability is the argument of these people. And finally, thank you very much. All the best.